We are in Lübau, a small town in Saxony. And on the outskirts of Lübau lies one of the most notable residential buildings of the new German objectivity movement, the new Schminke Haus, designed by acclaimed architect Hans Schawun. Welcome to Schminke House. Perhaps one of the most interesting things about the house is the charismatic nickname local people gave it. The house is affectionately called the Noodle Steamer. It was built in 1933 by the Schminke family, who were very successful second-generation pasta manufacturers in Lübau at the time, which led to this noodle steamer idea. You can see the steamer part when you walk around the building, when you move within the building. And that has a lot to do with the architect. Hans Schachun built the house. You see small portholes, the rounded edges of the building, which give it a bulky, cumbersome character. It pushes itself into the landscape, so to speak. So in the end, that's how the Schminke House got this wonderful nickname, the Noodle Steamer. Hans Scharun is one of the most important representatives of organic building, but he also has a very special biography. Hans Scharun was born in Bremen and grew up in Bremerhaven. And this at a time when the port and shipyard facilities in his hometown were being greatly expanded, and shipbuilding was one of the most innovative trades of the time. And Hans Schachun did not let go of that. He developed something like his very personal handwriting, something very maritime, nautical. So we have a lot of maritime, nautical motifs in the Schminke House. The Schminkes themselves had four children, and Hans Scharun created one of the most child-friendly houses of the 1920s and 30s. And the Schminkes put their children in the main public room of the house, in the entrance hall. There's their play area. There are lowered windowsills for any child above the age of two to climb on. That's usually not possible. We are in the kitchen of the Schminke House, and Hans Schachun designed it in the style of the Frankfurt kitchen, which was one of the first fitted kitchens in the 20s. And they actually built a time-saving kitchen. And the main thing was to find the most effective way to work within the kitchen and not to walk unnecessary distances. Han Scharun not only designed the building, but also had a say in the design and furnishing of the rooms. In architectural theory, this house is a key building, with a strong focus on child friendliness. This brings us here to the handrail leading to the upper floor. The four Schminke children slid down the handrail and only took the stairs in the rarest of cases. We are now in the parental bedroom of Fritz and Charlotte Schminke. They asked Hans Schorun to ensure that they are together, but also have some privacy. So they slept in separate beds, not because they didn't get along well, but because they actually had very different daily rhythms. The result is a very interesting room design. The couple laid down facing each other. The heads of the beds faced each other. So each could watch the other before going to sleep. And if they preferred, there were originally floor-to-ceiling wooden panels at each bedhead and a curtain rail, and it was easy to separate the space here. Charlotte Schminke was an early riser. She slept facing east, 
she was woken up by the morning sun. Fritz Schminke woke up fairly late, and when he opened his eyes, he could look through the window from a lying position and see the chimney of his factory and check whether his machines were already up and running. This is a very striking example, but Han Shahun's strength as an architect was that he had an unbelievably strong insight into the nature of the residents' needs and then tried to find a spatial equivalent. And the rooms can still tell us a great deal today. It's also a very special ship of life that carried the Schminke family through the fateful 1930s and 40s. A very strong historical metaphor, which this house simply carried with it through time. The Schminke family themselves only lived in this house for 12 years, which has to do with German history. From the early post-war years, around 1945, the house started to become a very public, very lively house. The Schminke House was the home for the Free German Youth Organization. And later it was home for local pioneers during the East German times, which means that still today, many people from Eastern Saxony associate very special life experiences with the Schminke House. Their first kiss, a disco or other memories from their youth. The Schminke House has been in public use for a long time. I believe that the Schminke House itself is part of every modern architecture lexicon. And I believe that organic building is something that has shaped the nature of architecture to this day.